I'd like to introduce Dr. Nathan Droz, who's going to present his experience and the Cleveland Clinic experience with acute normal bulimic hemodilution in OPIC, open aortic aneurysm repair. I'd like to thank the committee for the opportunity to present our paper entitled Decreased Transfusion Requirements in Open AAA with the Use of Acute Normal Bulimic Hemodilution. We have nothing to disclose. So a &H is an old blood conservation technique that was developed in the 70s when there was increasing awareness for the transfusion media disease diseases. Um, a &H involves removal of the patient's whole blood, storage of the blood in the operating room, uh, volume expansion that the patient requires, and then transfusion of the whole blood back to the patient um, during the completion of the operation, preserving all the autologous coagulation factors of whole blood. There's been multiple studies in cardiothoracic surgery and neurosurgery which have shown benefit of allogenic blood transfusions with a &H, though the efficacy in vascular surgery is not well documented. Um, this was our goal of the study, was to study our effects of a &H on blood product transfusion and coagulation parameters in patients undergoing open AAA. This was a retrospective uh, chart review of open AAAs at a coordinated referral center between the years 2017 and 19. We started using a &H in the middle of 2018. Patients were considered for the technique if they had an elective operation and had a medica greater than 38%. On the other hand, exclusion criteria were patients with a hematocrit less than 38%, infection, an emergent operation, a pre-existing coagulopathy, systemic infection, significant valvular disease, which is defined if anything greater than mild regurgitation or stenosis, or active myocardial ischemia. A&H patients were then compared to standard resuscitation techniques. Perioperative labs and transfusion requirements were analyzed. The data was analyzed using a two-sample t-test if it was normally distributed and with Cox and Rex sums if it was not normally distributed. 209 patients underwent open AAA during the study period. 76 of them were analyzed. There's roughly double the number of non-A&H patients to A&H patients. There was no uh, patient demographic show there was no statistically significant difference between the two groups. Surgical characteristics um, show that most cases were done for uh, aneurysmal disease. Most patients had a retroperitoneal operation for juxtarenal aneurysms. Clamp location was heterogeneous, though most were inferenal. Um, there was most of our anastomoses were inferenal, and most of them were by iliac bypasses. This, this slide shows our lab results um, for a &H versus non a &H patients. The a &H patients had more colloid transfused, which is probably an indication of their volume expansion that was needed after extraction of the whole blood. Um, at immediately post-operatively, in 24 hours, there was no difference in labs, but at 48 hours, patients with a &H had a higher platelet count and a lower PTT. The effects of uh, a &H on transfusion requirements are seen in this table. Um, a &H patients had less Paxil transfusions throughout their hospitalization and in total throughout their admission. There was no difference of FFP, platelet, or cryotransfusion between the two groups. The outcomes measures um, show that there is statistically uh, decreased length of stay using a &H compared to non a &H patients by almost two days. In conclusion, we think uh, we found that A&H patients uh, undergoing AAA, open AAA had a decreased Paxil transfusion and improved coagulation parameters. We think that this warrants a prospective trial into the benefits of A&H and open aneurysm of surgery, which we plan to continue at Cleveland Clinic. Thank you, and I'll take any questions. Presentation. So one question I have is, when do you give the the blood back with ANH. Yeah, so after um, anastomoses are complete and pulse exam is kind of performed distally, we can start to give protamine. Patients were gonna were given the blood back kind of at a um, regular rate um, to normal blood transfusion when protamine's being given. Okay. So it's starting to dry up essentially. Sure. And here's another question from the audience from Dr. McGee. So what is your indication for ANH? Are you doing this only for patients who won't accept blood transfusion or more liberally now? And based on your findings, would you recommend this for everyone? So the first part of the question, um, if they met inclusion criteria and the uh, equipment was available, um, those people were given ANH. Um, 
some of the logistics, logistical things were some of the limitations, meaning was the um, equipment available and was the anesthesiologist available to do it. Um, part of the other logistical part is the extraction of the blood can be um, time consuming. And so that's another kind of factor that is uh, weighed into the um, extraction of blood. Um, the second question, right now, I think that, yeah, we're, we're, off, we're doing it is uh, for everybody that meets criteria. We're not yet liberalizing outside of our criteria that is, I, I explained in the talk, um, but for people going elective operations with relatively normal um, cardiovascular function, they're being given a &H if it's available. And, and you showed that the ANH group got less autologous blood transfusion. So I'm trying to tweeze this out. Um, that's, that's great. Avoiding that autologous blood transfusion is great in and of itself. You're using um, similar amount of cell salvage in both groups. Is there any way to kind of look at the effect of the ANH, you know, weight that compared to the, the use of cell saver? Um, in, in avoiding that autologous blood transfusion. So are you saying like without cell saver, does the, do we, have we studied cell saver with and without ANH essentially? Well, you're giving the blood back at the end with ANH, that's right. part of the pr protocol. So if you lose blood intraoperatively without cell saver, you're gonna have to give autologous blood and may kind of mitigate the benefit. Um, is there any way to, kind of weight, you know, the effect of cell saver. Is this an effect of using cell saver versus an effect of the ANH? Well, all, all, patients, were, all patients had cell saver during the operation. So that's a routine kind of usage in aneurysm surgery um, in our practice. Um, so this is an additional thing. People have studied ANH without cell saver and did see benefits, um, but there are we think that you know ANH only helps to decrease the transfusion in addition to the uh, shed blood that's being given back. Thank you. And a question from Dr. Black: Are patients separately consented for ANH, and how much time does it add to your anesthesia prep time or your total OR time? Yes, they're uh, approached preoperatively by anesthesia. Um, also, the prep time again is uh, can be different based on how, I, I don't know if they've quite parsed out what um, about the hemodynamics of the patient. Um, maybe it's where the catheter is sitting in the vein and how well it's, it's against a valve or against a wall and how well the blood is actually extracted. Sometimes it's quick and sometimes it's uh, not. Um, if it isn't, um, those sometimes were the patients that only had 450 cc's extracted just based on time for the blood to be um, taken off. Great presentation. Thank you. Thanks, everybody.